turn to number 406, Wonderful Words of Life. believes in the equality, education, and empowerment of women. Radical. True Islam advocates freedom of conscience, religion, and speech. True Islam advocates for the separation of mosque and state. True Islam believes in loyalty to your country of residence. True Islam encompasses the universal declaration of human rights. True Islam believes all verses of the Quran and forbids.
and it's lying. True Islam recognizes no religion can monopolize salvation. True Islam believes in the need for a unified leadership. True Islam wholly rejects the concept of a bloody Messiah. He had to clarify that one because there are a lot of Christians in the room. They do believe in Jesus Christ. They believe that Jesus was crucified, that Jesus bled. The bloody Messiah is, they don't believe that God is going to come back someday and all those who do not believe in God, God is going to just kill and murder. That's the bloody Messiah. How radical. How Christian, if you really think about it. There's so many places in our country today that want to pass things like Sharia laws. In Oklahoma, while we were living there and right after we left Oklahoma, they were passing a bill in the state legislature saying that they would never recognize Sharia law. At the end of the lecture, one of the students raised his hand and asked the person who gave the presentation, which country is most Islamic in their beliefs? And that student said, is it Saudi Arabia? And the guy kind of chuckled for a second. He said, I really am a trained, educated attorney. And I will tell you, the country with its documents that are most Islamic is the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Our Constitution is basically the same. The only thing we have in our Constitution is the Fifth Amendment. According to the Quran, if you've done somebody wrong, you have to take responsibility for it. It's the only difference. I bet poor Mary Fallon in Oklahoma is just crying right about now. Just all of sad. There's nothing scary, nothing to fear. It's just like we have the KKK. We have the crazies. They've got their crazies. God alone. It keeps us going. That's why our doors stay open. You've got to love the crazies. One of the main tenets of Islam, according to this professor, is peace. If anyone ever wrongs you, or humiliates you, or does something bad to you, the only option you have as a believer of a higher power is to look at them and say, peace, peace be with you, and walk away. In the Gospel of John this morning, Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. In the Bible, the word for peace, shalom, never means simply the absence of trouble. It means everything which makes for our highest good. The peace which the world offers us is the peace of escape. The peace which comes from the avoidance of trouble and from refusing to face things. That's the peace of the world. The peace which Jesus offers us is the peace of conquest. No experience of life can ever take it from us. No sorrow, no danger, no suffering. Nothing can ever make it less. Christ's peace is independent of outward circumstances. We all strive for peace in our lives, or we say we do. Most of us say, I hate chaos and drama. We do our best to avoid people and places where these things abound. I'm sure that I'm not the first person to tell you life is chaos. 
Life is drama. And if you haven't figured it out yet, wake up. That's what makes us who we are. Let's look at some of us. Let's look at creation. We're a combination of cells and molecules and tissue. Our very being is chaotic. Think about it. Everything within us is chaos. Living cells, organisms. Look at nature. It's chaotic. We have wildfires, tornadoes, and earthquakes. Raining cats and dogs. It's ugly. It's chaotic. Think of the peaceful rivers. When you look out across the Buffalo, when you look out across the Mississippi, it's so shimmery, shimmering, beautiful, calm. But you feel at peace. But if you go just a little bit beneath the surface, it's pure chaos. There are fish doing nasty things under there. There's life going on down there. The piano player did not need to hear that. There's scary stuff happening under the surface. It's called chaos. It's called life. Our task in this life as Christians is to learn how to best live with the chaos and the drama that we're faced with. What would our life and our church be without this blissful chaos? The definition of death is the total cessation of all metabolic function. That's what life would be without the blissful chaos of death. We can accept the peace that the world really offers us and just suffer through the things that we call stressful or anxious and just get by if that's what you want. Or we can accept the peace that Jesus has to offer us. Christ's peace is independent of our outward circumstances. We can choose. Do we want to just settle and live with the stress and the chaos and the anxiety and the disorder? Or do we want to live with that perfect peace that Christ has to give us? If we are able to accept the true peace that Christ has for each of us as individuals and as a church, we are able to embrace the chaos and the drama and know that is also of God. I really did just say chaos is from God. It's an odd thing to hear, isn't it? Without chaos, we don't learn how to deal with things. True? We don't understand how to find things out for ourselves without a little bit of chaos. God knows without chaos we wouldn't have a bureaucracy. How would our government run? We would just collapse. We need chaos. We can be comfortable dealing with all things that come our way if we accept the peace of Christ. When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well. When the peace that Christ leaves us is with us and accepted by us, though Satan should buffet, trials come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has already regarded our helpless estate and shed precious blood for our souls, it is well. It is peace. With the peace that Christ leaves us, God hastes the day when the faith shall be sight, the clouds be rolled back as a scroll, the trump shall resound, and the cry shall be sinned. Even so, it is well. For we can look at Christ and not only hear Christ say to us, Peace be with you. We can look at Christ and say, Peace be with you. What a 
gift. What a gift to be able to look at our own Creator and say, peace be with you also. The peace that allows us to say, no matter what we face, it is well. No matter what God gives us to deal with, it's okay. You know, there's a posting that comes out on Facebook every once in a while that says, I've had some bad days and I've got a pretty good track record of getting through them so far. So maybe I'll make it through today too. If you need peace, then accept the peace. If you don't want peace, keep that gift to yourself. God's already given us enough chaos. You can keep yours. What a wonderful gift to give to yourself. We don't have to cause it for others. Just accept the peace. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled, but to console. To be understood, as to understand. To be loved, as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Accept the peace that Christ gives to us. Not the peace of the world, but the peace of eternity. The peace of happiness. And the peace of wholeness. It's your gift. Take it and live.